Hey there, everybody. Lady Silver Vixen here. This is part three of the Harry Potter controversy. Um, there's a lot of claims saying that Harry Potter is drawing kids to witchcraft. In some cases, it's true. In other, ca in most cases, it's not. Um, if a child wants to find out something about witchcraft, it is very easy for them to access the information. If you don't want your kids exposed to it, block them from it. Um, there, like I said in my first video, and if I believe correctly in my second video, there's child block on on TVs. There's child block on uh, laptops. There's child block on the internet. And as far as schools go, explain to your teachers, to your child's teachers, write to them and tell them that you don't want your kids being exposed to anything that's classified as pagan or that deals with witchcraft or any of that. Um, stop blaming the media for your lack of parenting. And I hate to put it that way because it makes me sound cruel. But when you break it down to the bare basics, that's where it all starts. Um, it's getting to the point now where it's become very ridiculous. If you type in Wicca at Harry Potter or Christianity at Harry Potter, you will come up with so much information that you will not have time to read it all. Um, you definitely get a bunch of differing views and a bunch of different differing opinions on the matter. But my th this here is about my personal views on the subject. Um, like I said in my first two videos, feel free to leave comments, leave links. Um, I'll try to get to them when I possibly can. Um, I have been a witch for 10 years, and I have taught quite a few kids that think that Harry Potter is the coolest thing in the world and they want to be a witch because of it come to find out later on down the road it's not what they thought and they turn right away from it um, saying that our kids aren't learning Christianity that falls on the parents and it falls on the churches um, if you want your children exposed to Christianity, take them to church. Plain and simple. Um, they do get a taste of Christianity in school still. I know this for a fact because uh, it hasn't been that long since I've been out of um, out of high school. Um, I think it's just ridiculous. I have to say that. Um, <coughs> Removing the Bible off of bookshelves in schools was kind of wrong um, on many different levels for the simple fact that there are still books on paganism and whatnot out there. And if you're going to have to if you're going to have tolerance for one religion, you need to have it for all religions. Um, if you're going to teach paganism, teach teach about Christianity. You have to have both sides. If you don't have both sides, then you start becoming one opinion. You have one opinion on the whole subject and you can't have that um, you have to have multiple opinions and I think it's a necessity that way you can gain a deeper understanding of why people feel the way that they do and why they worship what they worship and how they worship it and why um, the whole the whole thing about Harry Potter I know has been put in the past for the most part but search Harry Potter and Christianity on YouTube you will find a bunch of Christian camps saying that Harry Potter is teaching kids about devil worship and this that and the other now Harry Potter is teaching kids about morals and because of the moral decay that's happening in the world um, we need any type of moral that teaches us right from wrong 
no matter in what form it comes in, so that our kids know the difference between right and wrong. Um, I can talk about kids for the simple fact that I teach them, and some of my students might as well be my kids because I'm really the one person that they can turn to and talk to um, because their parents either don't want to listen to them or they just, they're, they're ignored. Their teachers ignore them. Their parents ignore them. And in, all, in some cases, even their friends will ignore them. And when you only have one person to turn to, and not a multitude of people to turn to, it does cause some serious psychological difficulties in development. Um, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. I have to say that uh, there are some there are some Christians out there who are extremely tolerant and will sit down with a pagan and try to talk to them. And I think it's a good thing. Because at that point, you have a blending of views and you start to gain an understanding of each other. And that's one of the reasons why I make the videos that I make. Um, I want to read something real quick. Um, that, down that six minutes and 34 seconds now. Um, this is from ChristianAnswers.net, and it is their article, Wicca and Paganism. For those of you who don't know, um, it is about, it is from evangel uh, Evangelism. And on this website, it talks about um, the occult, what it is, um, what what does the Bible say about it? Is Harry Potter harmless? Should Christians participate in Halloween? Uh, Halloween? And does Procter & Gamble have satanic ties? It talks about a lot of different things. The one thing that I like the most, however, is that it does explain to some pagans that at one point or another, true what are classified as true Christians were actually persecuted just like the Wiccans are now. And I don't think it's right to bash Christians. Um, I've tried my hardest uh, to sit back and try and be as tolerant as possible, but one of the things I wanted to say on here is from um, the suggestions section that's on here under um, about Wicca and paganism. There's a suggestion article on the side. And it says, show Wiccans and Pagans genuine Christian love and pray for them. Respect their beliefs, although this does not mean you have to agree with them. Uh, try and understand their beliefs. Don't just read Christian articles and books about Paganism. Do the research yourself. Get some books out by respected Pagan authorities. Take notes from them and share interesting portions of what you discover with them. Ask them what they believe about Christianity. And it is said that some... Uh, that many pagans have a distorted image of what Christianity is. Where they are wrong, correct them. Understand what many pagans and, that many pagans and Wiccans have had bad experiences with churches in one way or another. Some have even been brought up in an environment which profe uh, professes Christianity. Stress the relationship that Christians have with Christ. Stress the heart of the gospel, the death, resurrection, ascension, and second coming of Christ. Outline the strengths and reliability of the Bible as many pagans reject it as unreliable. Understand that most pagans and Wiccans reject the concept of objective truth. Stress the truth which is to be found in Christ. And that's from Spotlight Ministries. Um, so as you can see, even other Christians that are out there are stressing the fact that you have to be tolerant and that you have to sit down and take the time to learn what they're talking about and why they believe what they believe in. Um, I wanted to stress this point because it does fall into the category of the whole Harry Potter controversy thing where one person believes that it's doing this and another person believes that it's not doing this. So just sit back, relax, um, do some research on the subjects, and leave comments or whatever. This is Lady Silver Vixen and I'm signing off for now.